Imagine having a phone with a battery that lasts 20,000 years. When designing a battery, there are several key things you want. High energy density, wide operating conditions, small, safe, and long lasting. Well, what if I told you that there is a battery with 3,300 megawatt hours per gram, works in negative 60 degrees Celsius all the way up to 120, only 15 millimeters square. Would that be something that you would be interested in? Used in everything from the Voyager spacecrafts to pacemaker, nuclear batteries are making a comeback. But before we get into the video, if you will find this one interesting, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video. It helps my channel a ton. So back to radioactive materials. Well, the radioactive materials, while often associated with danger, they're also a source of continuous energy due to the fact they continuously radiate energy. Now, this makes them excellent candidates for long lasting battery technology. Like in the medical field where nuclear batteries were used since 1970s with some pacemakers powered by plutonium still operational today. Now these devices, these medical devices now mostly use lithium batteries requiring replacements every 10 or so years. Today, there are companies producing nuclear batteries using tritium decay, but they're mainly for scientific and medical uses. The power output of these batteries is very low, often measured in nanowatts, which are far less than several watts required by a typical smartphone. Thus, these batteries aren't really suitable for replacing conventional batteries in most consumer devices. Now, the niche market for nuclear batteries has seen interest from startups in the past several years, including a British company called Arkenlight and American firm Nano Diamond Batteries. Arkenlight associated with the University University of Bristol has plans to launch carbon-14 based nuclear batteries by 2026 with a higher output than most but still insufficient for general consumer use. Now nano diamond batteries on the other hand recently faced legal troubles over alleged fraudulent claims regarding their technology. There are two main types of nuclear battery. One involves using radioactive substance to generate heat, which then gets converted into electricity through a temperature gradient known as a radioisotope thermoelectric generator. This was initially developed for space missions. This technology has been in use for decades. However, the second method is for direct electricity generation using semiconductors to harness energy from the nuclear decay as it is more efficient. Now, this is the approach taken by the Chinese company called Betavolt. Their battery called BV100 has moderate power and voltage output, making it viable for devices that require low power over extended periods of time. If you haven't guessed it already, the catch is the minuscule output of only 100 microwatts or 0.0001 watt at 3 volts. So, how can these batteries be even helpful? In 2020, in 2014, the European Space Agency suffered an expensive issue that would not have been an issue if a nuclear battery was used. The Filey lander failure during the Rosetta mission in 2014. So Filey meant to land on a comet and an encounter challenging landing ultimately ending up in a shadowed area. Its solar powered batteries failed after just three days prematurely ending a costly mission. As a result, ESA is considering nuclear power for its upcoming Agronaut Moon Lander, set to launch in early 2030. As I said before, converting heat to electricity is insufficient compared to semiconductor-based electricity production. So these semiconductor batteries, known as alpha voltaic, beta voltaic, and gamma voltaic, are categorized based on the type of radioactive decay they harness. So alpha, beta, and gamma, respectively. Beta volt, utilizing the beta decay, as the name implies, <laughs> employs nickel 63 with a half-life of around 100 years in its batteries, placed between a diamond semiconductor with a PN junction. This technology, akin to what's used in solar cells, generates current not from incoming light, but from electrons released in the beta decay. 
Betavolt Innovation was recognized with a third place award in a recent contest hosted by the China National Nuclear Corporation. So their initial product, the BV100 battery, delivers 100 microwatts of power and 3 volts of voltage, comparable in size to a standard cell battery. While its power output may be lower than others, it offers a higher voltage. Though like nuclear batteries, the BV100 is likely to remain a specialized solution for long-lasting, low-power devices rather than a mainstream consumer product. But imagine having a phone with a battery that lasts 20,000 years. While I love learning and talking about technology, it would actually be really, really cool if an average person could build some of these things. Well. You actually can. You can follow the link in one of my favorite YouTube channels, Nerd Rage, where he shows you how to build a nuclear battery. One of my other favorite Nerd Rage videos and when he's making a working solar panel using raspberries. You really should check them out. But before you do, remember to like and subscribe to the channel and leave your thoughts down below on the nuclear battery. Do you care or did you just waste seven or eight minutes of your time? Make sure to let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.